Whether you drive a 1965 Ford truck or a 2015 Subaru wagon, you're going to have a dead battery someday and you need to know what it is before you just start throwing parts at it. I'm going to show you whether it's your battery, whether it's your alternator, how to determine quick and easy at home. Anybody can do it. Very basic, minimal tools. Let me show you. So I don't have a dead battery right now, but the reason for this video is I was standing at the auto parts store and it was a very similar situation that I get a call probably every couple months from somebody I know, a friend of a family member, family member. The battery is dead. What do they do? They jump started it. The battery is dead again. Is it the alternator? Is the battery? What do they do? They're lost for it. The guy at the auto parts store in front of me the other day was asking the, uh, the salesman, you know, what do I need to do? My battery is dead. It jump started it. It died again. You know, his recommendation was just put a new battery in it. $175. Put a new battery in it. And if that doesn't fix it, it's your alternator. The problem is you put a new battery in it, it might run a week if your alternator is bad, but then it's just going to go bad again and chances are you could ruin your new battery because of the alternator. So which is it? Let me show you quick and easy. First, you really only need one tool to make this job really easy and that is a multimeter. Um, this is actually a free one from Harbor Freight. I'm not going to use my good ones because I'm going to show you that a cheap one can do it. If not, they're like five bucks. I think even the Home Depot, almost any other place sells these things for right around five, ten dollars. Um, or just pick up a free one and set it there. It's very handy. So to diagnose whether it's your battery, your connections, or the alternator, there's a couple little basic tests you can do. First is if it's your connections, just you know the easiest thing you can do, and even if you're gonna replace your battery, just clean your connections. Take off the negative one first. And the reason you take off the negative one is because if you're using your wrench to take it off and you accidentally touch the body doesn't do anything. If you're, actually, if you're taking the positive off first, if you accidentally touch the body, big spark, big kabooey, scares the crap out of you, you can short out the battery, you can ruin it. So negative first and positive, clean the terminals. You know, that's basic, basic automotive. Anybody should be able to do that. Um, uh, terminals look clean. Another thing to check is where the wire comes into the connector, into the clamp. Make sure that's clean. Um, they sell these universal ones like this, which are really good. They come in brass or they come in lead. Um, either one are good. I like the brass a little bit better. This is a brass one, but you can see how dirty this one is. And the reason this one was taken out of service is you can see the corrosion in there. So even though this was actually a replacement and it was clamping down and you clean all that outside you want, still wasn't making good connection so your battery could not be charging or it just could be hard to start. Um, but clean that and if you, these, um, these band style clamps that they put on newer vehicles are crap. And so if you even suspect that a little bit, just cut the wire. There's enough wire there. Just snip the wire, um, strip back for a little casing a little bit, slide on a new, new one. Clip it on. These are like two bucks. Even Walmart sells them. But um, the other thing is, if your car won't start, check the voltage. Um, you know, a perfect battery should be right around 12.7 volts. Sometimes it can be a little bit higher. You can actually even have somebody jump in and crank the car for a second, and it shouldn't drop below 12 volts. If it drops below 12 volts while they're clicking it, you know, trying to start it, um, the battery is weak. Something like that. But say you've charged your battery and it keeps going dead on you, you don't know if it's your battery or your alternator, the easiest thing to do is to actually test the alternator and load test it. Before you say I'm not mechanically inclined, I'm not an automotive guy or girl, I have no idea how to load test an alternator, all you need to know is one of these little cheap free or five dollar multimeters, all you need to do is look at a voltage. That's it. So we're going to start the car and we're going to put these terminals on here. Right now it's at 13 point Oh nine, which is really good since the car hasn't been driven in a day or so so this battery is really healthy but we're going to start it up and we're going to put a load on the battery which is going to put a load on the alternator um, so we're going to start it up we're going to turn on the heater we're going to turn on the windshield wipers we're going to turn on the high beams we're going to turn on pretty much every accessory we can except for the radio because youtube won't allow me to do that and we're going to test the voltage and i'm going to tell you where it should be so everything is on. I got the rear window defroster on. I got everything. And what I want to see with an idling car is I want to see a voltage right around 13.5 or higher. So theoretically around 14. 14.6. Somewhere around there. Windshield wipers are on so it's fluctuating the, the load as it goes. I got a great alternator. As a general rule of thumb, if you're below 13 volts, if you're below 13.5 volts, your alternator is toast. Well, there we go. I put my alternator under the absolute worst case scenario with absolutely everything on and it was able to handle it, no problem. My alternator is great. So if I came out, my battery was dead. Either I 
left some lights on or something else or my battery is at fault and I need to have that checked out. So you need to take that out in any auto parts store, you know, go get a new one, they'll do a quick test for you, but that's gonna be the problem. My alternator is fine. Now, if the battery, if the voltage was lower, I know for a fact that um, if my terminals and everything are clean, that my alternator can't keep up and that is weak and that is causing not charging the battery. So at least I need to replace the alternator and maybe the battery because if you let it go too long where you've constantly got a dead battery and the alternator not charging it, it can, it can hurt the battery. So the battery can get weak. Not always, but sometimes. Um, especially if you jump start it a ton, you know, you're going like weeks and weeks and weeks and just keep jump starting it or charging it at home and the alternator can never keep up. It puts a lot of strain on batteries. They're never meant to be discharged you know, all the way they're meant to be just, you know, a standard car battery is just meant to be discharged just a little bit and then recharge or just constantly and that gives it the longest life. But if you didn't want to fork out the free or the five dollars that these usually cost is there's a, a rougher test you can do if you're in the middle of nowhere, you know, you're in the middle of a grocery store parking lot, somebody else jump starts you, you know, and your car is running and you want to be able to tell whether or not you got to replace an alternator or whether or not you got to replace a battery is to do a visual test and to have the car running, while the car is running, you have somebody turn on the headlights first and then have them turn on everything else. Have them turn on the heater on high, have them turn the rear defrost on, have them turn on the wipers, have them turn on fog lights if you have them, and watch your headlights. And if they dim dramatically, then your alternator's not keeping up. If they don't really dim, dim at all, then your alternator's keeping up and it's just your battery's fault. So, eh, kid for that. But if you do have a weak battery and you determine it's a weak battery, I do have a good video and it's kind of, you know, people don't really believe it, but it's actually taking just regular Epsom salt and I'll put a link to the video after this and you can pour Epsom salt in a weak battery, not a shorted battery. There's six cells in a battery and sometimes a cell can short and just completely be lost and generally, you know, you'll have a battery just, you know, no matter what, you'll, you'll charge it all the way up and then you go check it and it's 11 and a half volts or something like that. Yeah, it usually has one shorted cell because it's six batteries in one, but you just pour Epsom salt, dilute it, a whole video on it in each cell and that actually gives you a ton more life. I actually got four, I've actually been able to get four or five more years out of batteries by it. It's actually a cool little trick. So I'll put a link to that video after this, but hopefully that helps you out, saves you a couple bucks, you know, helps you diagnose the problem a little bit better. And this is for any car. This is absolutely for any car, works on everything. You know, that's nice. It's from 1965 to 2015, same darn things. Thanks for watching. This video helps you out, help me out. Leave a comment below, thumbs up, share, rate, comment. Let grandma know so she knows how to fix her car. Thanks guys, see you soon, bye. So this right here, you can see is over eight years old. This is over an eight year old battery. And I actually saved this one. This one was actually thrown away. And I got a little tag here. It says cold cranking gaps and, and crap like that from a couple years ago. But I put Epsom salt in this one and she still runs and works great. Has no problem starting this little four cylinder. Winter or anything, even down to zero degrees, has no troubles whatsoever. And I think I can get another couple years out of her.